Hey guys, back again with another video that seems to be never-ending videos on the subject of the atonement, but I want to go over another important verse that people will use to support penal substitutionary atonement, which is Galatians 3.13, which says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So it says that Jesus was made a curse for us. And um, just like in other, uh, another verse where it says that Jesus was made sin for us, and I've said in a previous video where, where it talks about Jesus being made sin or Jesus bearing our sins or bearing our inequities, uh, how that means that Jesus made atonement for our sins or Jesus was an atonement for our sins. And basically, that Jesus made intercession for our sins is basically what it means. It doesn't mean that our sins were imputed to him. It doesn't mean that Jesus was punished in place of us for our sins. Or, I mean, in, instead of us. I'm sorry. Punished instead of us, basically. Um, so, what does it mean that he was made a curse for us? And I want to look at this. And before I look at that, too, I want to say that... I've been watching a lot of videos on this, on the penal substitutionary atonement lately, you know, refuting it. And, you know, I've come across Jesse Morrell and uh, Kerrigan Skelly and um, Mike Desario, who's dead now. And I've always written these guys off because of what I believe they teach is sinless perfection. <clears throat> which I still don't agree with, but all their videos and their arguments against the penal substitutionary atonement, I, I agree with a lot of that now. And it's surprising to me how I held that against them before in the past that they believed and that they rejected penal substitutionary atonement. I thought, you know, they're heretics for rejecting it, but now I'm pretty much on their side as far as that goes. And so, uh, my mistake, but, you know, we learn and we change and we grow and I'm seeing this clearly, that penal substitutionary atonement is false, but uh, I hope that the people listening to this are starting to see that. Maybe not. Maybe you think that I'm crazy. You still want to hold on to it. But, uh, and you know, each of those guys, Jesse Morrell, Kerrigan Skelly, and Mike Desario, they, um, they're all, you know, against Calvinism, and I'm learning that Calvinism and the penal substitutionary atonement are pretty much linked. And... You know, I don't know what theories of the atonement they have, and I don't know that I would agree with them. I know that uh, Jesse Morrell, I think, believes in moral government theology, and I think uh, Mike Desario believes in ransom theory, and so I don't know still a lot about those. I keep saying that, but I need to look into those. But I do think some of the things that Mike Desario said in one of his videos, um, you know, if you look at penal substitutionary, atonement is false or something like that, you'll come up with a, a video of his that someone uploaded. And I, I, I like a lot of what, it's, what he says in there. Not everything, but um, I'm in total agreement with him on some of that stuff. So anyway, so we're looking at Galatians 3.13. And again, I'm going to look at Albert Barnes, who I think is a Calvinist himself, but he seems to have a good view on a lot of these verses, or he, he makes some good points anyways, that helps us to understand it. It says, being made a curse for us, and I'm not going to read all this, I'm just going to skip through some of it, but it says, this is an exceedingly important expression, and, uh, uh, see, there is scarcely any passage in the New Testament on which it is more important to have correct views than this, and scarcely anyone on which more erroneous opinions have been entertained. In regard to it, we may observe that it does not mean. So the fact that Jesus was made a curse for us does not mean that uh, being made a curse, that by being made a curse, that the Lord Jesus' character or work were in any sense displeasing to God. Uh, Jesus was not ill-deserving. He was not blameworthy. He had not done any wrong. Jesus uh, was not guilty in any proper sense of the word. Okay. Uh, cannot mean that Jesus properly bore the penalty of the law. His sufferings were in place of the penalty, not the penalty itself. Okay. Um, 
you know, or it was to avert the penalty, which was, so I, I wouldn't agree with every little thing that he says here, but Jesus was not sinful. So we get it. Jesus wasn't guilty. Jesus wasn't sinful. So you can't say that Jesus was made a curse. That means that, you know, he became sin or that he became guilty or anything like that. And um, he goes on to say some other stuff. So, and basically it says the idea comes from uh, Deuteronomy or when Moses said that cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And basically um, people had to be hanged or let's see here. The meaning is that when one was executed for a crime in this manner, he was the object of the divine displeasure. Okay. So when they were hanged, uh, or crucified, whatever is going on here, they were guilty of something. Okay, they were they did something that was deservable of death, and so they were they were crucified or hung, and and because they were crucified or hung, because they did something that was deserving of that, they were seen as being cursed. Okay, by God. And so he goes on to say that the sense of this passage before us is therefore that Jesus was subjected to what was regarded as an accursed death. He was subjected to what was regarded as people as an accursed death. He was treated in his death as if he had been a criminal, as if he had been a criminal. He wasn't. He was put to death in the same manner as he would have been if he had himself been guilty of the violation of the law. If he had been a thief or a murderer, if he had committed the grossest and blackest crimes, this would have been the punishment to which he would have been subjected. Okay. So it's basically in the eyes of the people that he suffered as a criminal. He was put to death as a criminal, though he was not. So in that sense, he was made a curse for us. It was as though he had been cursed by God. It was as though he had been guilty. It was as though he had been a criminal. But he wasn't in any sense of any of those. He's, he's God in the flesh. He was perfectly sinless. Okay. And it doesn't mean that he became sin, that he, uh, you know, had our sins imputed to him, that he was a lump of sin on the cross, that he became a blackened sinner, you know, uh, guilty of the wrath of God, or that he was punished uh, instead of us for our sins. So that's that. God bless.